morning. <coughs> 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 Good morning, welcome to the garden. We've had a lot of questions about growing pomegranates. Um, On our property, we grow about eight pomegranate trees. And I will tell you that the ones growing in full sun put on the most fruit. The ones growing in shade will sometimes fruit a little bit and sometimes not. But these ones that grow in full sun put out fruit every year. If ever you feel that there are a significant amount of blossoms and you're wondering, do I thin? The answer is no. Just let it self thin. It'll take care of itself. Just let it go. This variety that we have growing back here in the backyard is a cultivar called Wonderful. And that's the same cultivar that the company Palm Wonderful <clears throat> highlights <clears throat> excuse me, in their commercial venture. Many of you know this already. I am into intercropping. And so I do have trees and vegetables growing in the same patch. So to the side of this pomegranate tree, you'll see lettuces, onions, and one more beet. There's some celery under there. And then between these two pomegranates, I am growing beets, parsley. This side of this pomegranate is chamomile. You might be able to tell already, this is about my height. I am keeping these pomegranate trees small to be able to harvest with feet on the ground. My husband said when I planted the trees, I don't ever want to be an old man on a ladder. Can you keep the trees small? And I said, of course I can. We grew a pomegranate tree in my childhood and often my parents turned me loose with the clippers to make sure the sidewalk was clear, make sure people could shoot towards the uh, basket for basketball, things like that. And I knew from uh, that early experience that pomegranates took well to pruning. So don't worry about cutting your pomegranate. You don't want it to be so tall. Keep it shorter. It's okay. I'm going to show you a limb I cut this year that got out of hand right there. See that strong branch? That was a thick branch that was heading straight up. And I didn't want any growth straight up. I also take off suckers from the bottom. There's a couple down there. I would just trim those up because I want the energy that the tree is collecting from the soil and the sun and water and all of that to go towards um, production of leaves and blossoms at the canopy level, not necessarily down below. When I trim my pomegranate tree, I tend to keep the weepy branches, if that makes sense. Pomegranates have a natural weeping quality to them. And so, as I said, I took those branches, if they jutted straight up, took them off. But look at these ones that bend and curl down. Here's bend. They're bending pointing downward. Keep those ones. Trim off the ones that are jutting straight up. That's if you really want to shape your tree. Some people honestly just leave their pomegranate tree alone to do whatever it's going to do. They're not necessarily trying to keep it small or trying to shape it in any particular way. But this is what I do. Because this entire large area is a space that isn't wholly dedicated to an orchard, but is where I'm growing lots of vegetables and things. Corn and different things. Um, you can see that I have drip lines running through this area. So, one, two, three, four drip lines will be um, passing by these pomegranates. 
So here's the the understory of this pomegranate. So then, yeah, right by the trunk of the tree of one. There's so much foliage down there. Let's see if you can see the other drip line too. Um, on either side. And then I don't treat it necessarily as tree watering, but what do my vegetables need? You know, is the lettuce looking good? The onions looking good? Did it get dried out? Do they need more water? And so that's how much water the pomegranates are getting um, during, <clears throat> excuse me, during many of the winter months, I had the water shut off altogether. The beets were a little bit dormant, not necessarily growing. They didn't need water. The trees are dormant. They didn't need water. Um, but then during the growing season, oh, depending on how hot the day is and how dry things are getting, I might be watering every other day and sometimes less frequently. I heard recently that the number one reason we lose fruit trees is due to overwatering. And um, I'm just finding, well, let's see, we planted these in 2013, and they are faithfully producing every year a good amount of fruit. We're getting a lot of juice, a lot of jars of jelly out of it. Um, so they're, they're taking well to, to my style of watering um, with the annual vegetables in mind more so than what do the trees need. <clears throat> um, you would have to see for your location if that, that style of watering would work for you. Pomegranates seem very forgiving to me as far as a desert fruit tree goes. You see them all over town. They're really a no-fuss tree. You know, I trim mine. Other people don't even bother. And they, whatever amount of water they get, they, they do produce um, leaves and fruit. And I just, I just think if you're gonna put a tree um, in your Southwest desert, this is just a top, top-notch tree. I'm gonna think, have a think for a minute and see if there are any other questions um, that have come up regarding growing pomegranates and make sure I'm answering all of those. Okay, so we talked about not thinning the fruit, let it self thin. We talked about pruning it however you like, gardener's choice, don't worry about it. You go ahead and you prune your tree, clip the branches how you want them to be. Um, we talked about how they do grow in the southwest desert. I grew up in Southern California, coastal Southern California, and they, they grow there. Some people ask, can I grow a pomegranate tree in my area? And I think your number one resource to answer that question would be to take a neighborhood walk and just see, um, is anybody growing pomegranates in your town? Um, or just give it a try, and then you can be your number one resource. Trial it, and did it work, did it not work? Um, and then the watering, you know I'm just watering according to my vegetable patch. Um, people eat them, how do you use it? You know, crack it open, eat the seeds raw, um, juice them as we do, and put it, uh, make jelly out of it. I will tell you the Palm Wonderful Palm Wonderful, I'm using the company name. The cultivar Wonderful um, is very tart. It's red and purpley and beautiful and tart. And that's a good one for jelly. And then there are other varieties. There's one that's grown here in Southern Utah called Dixie Sweet. And it's pink inside. And people um, use that more for fresh eating and put it in salads. And I will say that the seed on that one is easier to chew than this one, which I think, I just, I eat the flesh around it and spit the seed out. I'm not into really chewing the seeds. Um, did I answer all the questions? I just, I love pomegranates so much, so <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I cover all the bases. But if I missed anything, uh, put your question in the comment section and I'd be happy to, to talk more and chat more about pomegranates because I love them. So, happy gardening!